Welcome to Flea Market Love Letters. My name is Liz McGuire. I'm the creator and curator of this digital archive of vintage love letters. Thanks for joining me today as we take a look at how you at home can preserve your vintage letters. Whether you're a family historian or a collector like me, it's important to make sure that our letters are safe and dry and kept so that we can enjoy them for years to come. I've been archiving letters since 2017, so the te techniques that I'm gonna show you today are very amateur, but they work. This means that you can find the supplies at office supply or art supply stores near you and get started today. It can seem daunting when you're looking at a collection of five letters or 500, but it's important to take your time, be measured, and confident in your preservation. What you're doing today will help preserve stories for decades to come. The first thing I do when I start with a collection of letters is to make sure to put them in chronological order, but we'll get to that later. Today we have 15 letters that I haven't even looked at yet for the purposes of this video. The first thing I do when I have a collection in front of me is make sure that my workspace is clean and dry. That means no cups of coffee, however much you might want one. After I make sure my workspace is ready to go, I grab my binder. So I have this ready to the side. This is an art portfolio book or A4 binder, which means that the binder sleeves are already mounted inside. However, you can use a binder sleeve from any office supply store and three ring binder or any that you might have sitting at home. When starting archiving your letter collection, the most important thing to do is put them in chronological order. The question that I often get from readers of Flea Market is how do I know the letters are in chronological order? Now I've taken these 15 and put them in as best an order as I can. I have 15 letters here from 1935 to 1940, the majority of them in the 1930s. This is a great example for what I'm gonna be talking about today because there's no actual date on the stamp of this letter, and by stamp, I sometimes mean postal code. The postal mark is a way that we can tell where a letter has traveled since when it was written to when it was received. In all of the other letters we have today, I can tell you October 10th, 1940, August 7th, 1938, but this letter doesn't have any. So what happens if your letter collection at home doesn't have a letter stamp or a letter date? Very gently remove your letter and see if there's a date or a detail inside that can help you put your letters in order. Now, our friend here hasn't included a date, so what that means is that I'll keep this letter separate to the end of the archive until I'm able to read through all of them and better place where this may be in the story. The letter writer may include a detail or specific event that you can place when you've read the other letters that are in order, but the fundamental thing to do is to make sure that you have as much detail for this letter together at one time. That means including the envelope, even though it doesn't tell us much about the date or time, but it will later. Okay, so you have the rest of your letters in date order. The first thing I do when I have them in date order is clear them all to the side, and then very, very gently, depending on the age of the letter, you may even wanna wear gloves while doing this process, but I remove the letter very gently from the envelope and flatten the letter. Keeping the envelope with the letter, I then move them to the side. I'll repeat that process with the rest of the letters in the collection. I can't overpromise how important it is to have a clean, dry workspace with plenty of room when you're doing a project like this. So, I may have been saying that you don't want to have any liquids near you, but I've been sitting with a coffee cup. What's that about? This is the Write More Letters Project. In 2020, I started the Write More Letters Project, which is a fundraiser for U.S. veterans and military families. Since then, we've raised almost $2,000 through private donations, the sales of Write More Letters masks, mugs, and t-shirts, and now stickers as of 2021. We're so excited to be able to support Hope for the Warriors, the charity that Write More Letters benefits because of the work that they do for U.S. veterans and military families. It's so important for the archive and for Flea Market Love Letters to give back to the community. We are a community-based project after all, and many of the stories that our readers enjoy are written by veterans. It's so important to support your community, and if you have the chance to make a donation to Hope for the Warriors, let me know. Okay, once you have the letters all spread out and ready to go, the next thing you do is grab your binder. I have here a binder that will store 40 letters, so we have 15, so that's perfect. This is a very amateur way of doing this, but it's important to get the letters out of the elements as quickly as possible. 
So whether you're in charge of your family letters or you're like me and a collector of vintage letters, getting these into an environment where there's temperature and water control is the first and most important step to letter collecting. Great, once you have your letters all ready and in chronological order, I recommend being very gentle and starting to put them together. I like to keep my envelopes with my letters. Now some people when they're doing this prefer to keep the letter pages separate. So you might use a single page for every page of a binder or you might keep them together. For the sake of time and budget, I keep my letters together, but there are professional archivists who warn against that because the paper and acid could rub together and deteriorate more. However, if you're just beginning, this is kind of the easiest way to get started with a project that might seem fairly overwhelming, but is very important and very rewarding in the long run. And just continue the process. Great, so when you have all of the letters ready to go, they'll look something like this. I love seeing the letters like this because it gives you an overview of what you're about to experience when you're reading them as an archive. Now, there's some great examples in here about 1930s stamps, penmanship, there's even some lovely phrases, darling, dearest wife, beautiful, really special stuff that you're only able to see when you have a collection preserved and displayed like this. If you are interested in learning more about letter preservation or sharing your letter story with Flea Market Love Letters, send us an email at info at Flea Market Love Letters or find us online at www.fleamarketloveletters.com. You can also send us a message on Instagram at Flea Market Love Letters where I would love to hear your letter story. Thanks for watching. I'm Liz and this has been Flea Market Love Letters.